Hey, hey, ladies and guys. If you're in here, that's okay. <laughs> it is the ladies session. Um, how's everybody doing? Uh, we just want this to be pretty chilled. I want this to be pretty chilled. Very good. So, um, so we're just we're just chatting. Um, we just call this leading ladies, which is just means ladies that lead, which is all of you, and all of us should be leading. So it's not just category uh, for one specific type of leadership, church leadership, and women. That's what this is about. And just kind of getting to know some of our arc women. Uh, which I think is just so key. The last few months, we've been having some um, Zoom calls with some ARC women, and I've loved it. I mean, I, nobody loves Zoom anymore, but it has been so good. And honestly, I felt like it, it kind of like tilled the ground for getting here. And, and there were some, um, there, you know, like, yeah, anyways. So I want to hand the floor over right away. I want you to introduce yourself. Give us kind of like a overview in like 60 seconds of like who you are, family life, uh, how you're part of ARC, and like what your favorite ice cream is. Yeah, go for it. I'm Monica Prescott, City Life Church, the Duke. I have my daughter here. She was my second born, sister my first born son is wonderful. He got married a couple years ago, gave me one grandson, and I have their granddaughter coming in anytime between the next month, sometime before, sometime between now and July, middle of July. Um, I'm the lead pastor. I would do um, my week kind of looks like more of the hands-on church life. My husband is we're partners together in the church and ministry. He also has two businesses that he runs, so I do more of the hands-on and um, kind of running to the basic in and out of church life. And what was the thing I'm supposed to tell? Favorite ice cream? Yeah. Favorite ice cream? I don't know. Anything preferably not dairy, but salted caramel is pretty good. Whatever we had the other night was awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I'm Chantal Beresford. I lead Surf City Church in Ontario with my husband. We have three kids. My oldest is going to high school. Crazy. Uh, we've been married 16 years. I have a 12-year-old. And my last one, my daughter, she's a New Year's Eve baby, born right before midnight, our party baby. And I'm pretty much the executive pastor at our church. So I run a lot of our staff and our teams and operations. Yes. And my favorite uh, ice cream is mint chocolate chip. Yes. <laughs> so good. There's something wrong with me. I hate ice cream. Is that bad? <laughs> okay. No. Okay, well, then what's yeah. your snack? What's your... Yeah. Salty. Chips. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Chips. Um, I'm Nancy, and my husband and I lead a church called Nova Church, and we uh, are having a great time. We've been doing this for almost five years. Um, I love my family. My family is my prized possession. I have two teenagers, 18, um, in high school, and I can't believe it. It's a blink. And my daughter is 15, and she's five foot nine, and I'm five foot two. So um, they're beautiful and wonderful. And we, my role is really different. Um, my value and role look look different. On paper, yes, I show up at the office. We work super hard. But um, I just want to say, if you could hear anything today, know that your presence is really powerful. And it may not translate on paper, but who you are is really, really awesome. Okay, yeah, you're cool. you're awesome. Hi, my name is Faith Biswitherick. I've got a very complicated last name. Um, I'm from City Church in Brandon, Manitoba. Um, yeah, and I am an assistant pastor at our church. Um, it's kind of different for me because I'm not our senior pastor. I get the honor to serve Pastor Ben and Sarah Carouge, and I've uh, been doing that since the launch of our church in 2017, and it's interesting because I got ordained as a pastor in the pandemic. So 2020 was my ushering into pastoral ministry, and um, I like to say that I love my ice cream the way I like my husband, Vanilla. Um, <laughs> I've been married to my incredible husband, Scott, for four years in September, and we love our church family. We love getting to serve. And a what I do at work is um, oversight of our teams, uh, staff, 
departments, making sure Sundays run, um, visiting people in the hospital if they needed, birthdays, um, everything to do with people yeah. is kind of what my area is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that. What a good group, hey? And I know that all of you have uh, an incredible story and you know, we've got the afternoon we have tonight still. I wanna encourage you to take some time and meet somebody and meet somebody that you might not know, hopefully make a connection that can last beyond these two days. But you know, it is it, an understatement to say that we've been through a crazy couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, leading, leading a church, co-leading a church, being on staff in a church during this season in Canada has been not so. Uh, I think that we've been hearing so many amazing things that I think that would be easy to latch on to. But if you, this is my question to you ladies, if there was something that you could have said to yourself then that you know now, does that make sense? <laughs> what would you have said and kind of like, I mean, Monica, you've been in ministry for uh, quite a while, which is crazy. She isn't, how is that even possible? Like, she's so fit. She would crush all of us, honestly. <laughs> she, she, do you still do those, like, ice bath things? I've done it once. That, that is my, that's my summer goal, is to get more consistent. My husband converted a old deep freeze into an ice bath. And didn't you, didn't, when, like, didn't he preach in it or something? He did, he did it as an illustration. He filmed it ahead of time using his message. And I did it. I lasted almost two minutes. Wow. I'm sorry. the ice off. No, I like hot bath. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but is there, is there something that you could think about right now? Like, hey, man, I really wish th yeah. then... Something now that I, I know now that I wish I knew that. I knew now I would have that told I myself. wish I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I know now. I know now that I think I actually do better with not a lot of ahead information. I actually have a kind of personality that does good in crisis in the moment. Right. So I think when I have too much information, I worry too much. So, <laughs> no, but I think if I would have told myself anything, I wish I knew that, that it's going to be longer than you, what you thought. Yes. And that's okay. Right. I probably would have taken a breath. And you're going to lose some people, and that's okay. Right. And um, just just take a breath. And the whole thing about chill and relax, I was just like, yes, yes. I needed yeah. that word. That's yeah. probably what I would say. Just learn. It, this is going to be okay. This yeah. is necessary, and it's going to be good. Yeah. 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 Nancy? Well, yeah, I think that I would have told myself, hang on. You're going to help some people. You're going to help some people, and in this industry, you know, like you're teaching people the word, but during COVID, I learned that he was the God of his word, and I'm not saying that to sound super spiro. It's just that in this job, you sometimes get um, a little distracted in, okay, yeah, oh, that's a good Proverbs to throw out on that Sunday and different things, but um, in that season, God just really showed up. In a, in a really different way. I think that I had made him just a little bit bigger than human um, in this job. And during COVID, he's like, no, no, I am the God of my word. Yes. yes. And uh, that was a, that, you know, you get corrected. Yeah. Yeah. Nancy, tell us a little bit about um, your venue situation over this. Yeah. Let me encourage you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I just love hearing the stories about venues. Um, we navigate, we meet at Halifax West, which is a high school in our, in our city. Um, it's beautiful, it's an auditorium, and there's lots of spaces for our ministries, like kids and next steps and different things. However, there's a segment of time for seven weeks that we don't get our venue because it goes to a dance company who pays the school so much more than we ever could. Like they pay $30,000 to get in there for a couple of days, so there's really no competition. And I will tell you, it looks like we're being creative and um, we just, we do pizza nights, um, we change venues and we load in and load out. So we went to a complete different venue. Um, before the pandemic, we didn't have online church. That was something that happened in like a hot second. And so then we, we go online, um, but our people find us. And I'm really excited for the day that we actually have a space and a venue, yes. yeah. um, but our people are 
incredible. Uh, we have about 70 volunteers that are truly our greatest resource that work their guts out for this vision. And um, we're so grateful for that team. Chantal, what would you have said to yourself then? My kids would be okay. Right. Good. I think that was probably the hardest part. Um, my husband and I lived six years in a basement apartment with five of us for six years. And so when the pandemic hit with all my kids, my daughter was in JK trying to do, she doesn't even know how to read. So I had to be, I would bring her beside me and trying to figure out her computer with my computer plus my two boys. Um, while that, my son um, ended up being um, high anxiety, like up the roof, yeah. that it was manifesting physically as well. And I'm like, are we gonna make it? Right. And a church not knowing what we were going through at home at the same time. Um, but to know now that my kids are thriving, they're doing amazing. We bought a house in the pandemic, yeah. come on! Uh, but I didn't think we we're gonna. I didn't think I was gonna make it with my three kids. I just, are they gonna be okay? Like I just did it. I was so worried, and they cried a lot. My, I, I seen boys cry is really it was the soft spot for me. They're like, I'm, cause not knowing when it hit March, we, my kids are, um, my boys are very um, asthmatic, so we didn't put them in school. So they didn't see their friends for another year and a, eighteen months after, and then we moved to another city. Um, so it was really, really hard on my boys, that transition. But just to see two years later where we're at, that they're thriving yes. and okay. doing so good. Yes. So good. Faith? Uh, I think, yeah, just what Pastor Monica said, it's a marathon. It's not a race. I think at first it was very much, it's going to be two weeks, and then everything's going to be fine. It's like, oh, we could do this. Two weeks of no church. I think it got real for me that this was going to be a marathon when it affected my family in Nigeria. So I'm, I'm originally from Nigeria and I'm a pastor's kid through and through. Um, and I've never seen my parents shut down church. I'm the kind of person who's gone to church like three times a week, four times sometimes. Um, just, but when I would call my parents and they were doing church from home, like my parents are in their 60s now, late 50s, 60s, and they were trying to figure out the online stuff the same way we were trying to figure it out. And they were having church from home and just trying to keep them encouraged. Yeah. That's when it was like, okay, um, this is not going to be a quick thing. Yeah. And so I'm so blessed to be under a house that uh, is just so ingrained in prayer. Yeah. So the first thing we did when everything shut down was we used to have secret prayer meetings downstairs in our basement uh, with eight of us. I don't think that was allowed, but we like just, it's we the were underground like, church. It's okay. It's the yeah, underground church. It was church. like, we had to pray. Yeah. We just had to get together and pray. And God gave us so many words um, of confirmation that it gave us strength um, to get into the marathon and be like, we're going to make this, we're going to make it through yeah. because we had prayer as our foundation. Yeah. So. Yeah, so good. Pastor Monica, you said um, people will leave, yeah. but it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like pretty, uh, that's a big statement to make. And um, pe people, people definitely left. Yeah. And obviously we're still going, we're still, but it, it's not without pain and hurt. Yeah. And watching them leave is, is challenging. So how, how do you overall, like I think this is kind of one of those soft spots in all of us because being in ministry is unique. It's um, people are, are, for lack of a better way of saying it, product. It's not like we work for oil and gas. Uh, people are a product. People are also who we work with. Uh, we're, we're always, it's people, it's we're yeah. shoulder to shoulder with people, we're ministering to people, people's needs, people are the ones who are reaching out to us in the middle of the night, people are the ones who are lashing out at us on social media, people are the ones who have an opinion on what we should or shouldn't be doing, and then, of course, people that you really, like, um, put a lot of, a lot into, yeah. all of a sudden, you know, like, I mean, yes, yesterday in, uh, I don't know if you were in uh, Nathan Finocchio's afternoon session, but he was talking all about the root 
and how like if, if there's no root then there's nothing for them to to like cling to in these tough times but it's hard because there was a little bit of like well I thought you had a root yes. like yeah. like you've been on team for like a really long time well you faked your root yeah. pretty good yeah. <laughs> yeah, like true. like or like what were you actually rooted in yeah and, and so, like, I felt really blindsided by some of the people who left. And um, so how did you navigate that? How do you navigate that? How do you keep your heart soft in that? What's your process? <laughs> What's the process? It was hard. There were some people, like, we've been doing, we celebrated our church's 30th anniversary just the beginning of May. And so some of the people that left, they've been with us for, like, 20 years. This yeah. is like, I I've been brought you through 10 years, you turkey, like 20 years, like what are you thinking? But you know, there was a game changer in my perspective. Like I honestly, I'm so thankful for the last two years because what it did in me and just uprooted a lot of the crap in me and just the wrong perspective. I think something that helped set a right filter in me of all of the timing of it was it was right at the beginning of COVID. I just didn't you know, have extra time, so I was reading a bit more. I'm always reading, but I grabbed a hold of a book I'd been wanting to read, and it was Eugene Peterson's The Pastor. It's oh, yeah. his autobiography. And if you haven't read it, I recommend it. It just really, I mean, this is the heart of a pastor. And I recognize reading through it's just like, I don't have a pastor's heart. I'm a suck. This is terrible. Like I just, you know, but just looking and recognizing like he just over and over, like the church, this is God's church. Yeah. This isn't relying on you. This yeah. is God's church. Yeah. They're his people. Yeah. Yeah. He's bringing them to you. Yeah. And you, you know, you, you do what you can. And just even what you were said about the roots, God had just give me a picture of you. We have these, I don't do any of the gardening and yard work, but once in a while there's different things that pop up that drive me nuts. And we have a tree out front beautiful flower bed but every once in a while there are these stupid little mini trees that pop up you know what i'm talking about the suckers i just i hate them because it looks like it's clutter yeah. and it looks terrible and i just you know that was one of the pictures and that was that was another thing that was hard is because you see like you said i thought you were rooted yeah. And it's, you know, God gave me a picture. It's just like, you know, sometimes the roots, it's like when, when life gets busy and it gets full on and we go, we do the church thing and I recognize we've been doing the church machine. Yeah. And, you know, and that it really, um, I recognize that, you know, what looked like fruit, it was just suckers. It's like it wasn't real deep rooted and that's hard to take, not to take personally. Yeah. But what I've tried to keep perspective on is even in the early years is, you know, we've had people go, but then shockingly out of the blue, they show up again. Yeah. And I've seen it happen, not like over and over and over again, but I've seen it happen enough that it's like, I just need to remember that story. I remember one guy at the beginning, year three, one of our key youth leaders had, was, you know, ended up marrying this person that was, we, everybody's saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, got married, left, and it turned out to be a disaster. And three years later, you know, we randomly connected another church event. He's like, can I come back? And I'm like, heck yes. You know, it's been with us since. And so I just remember, and it's just like, you really do. It's just like, God, I just got to remember, I, this isn't about me. You have entrusted me with them. And I just got to remember they're your kids before they were mine, before they were here at this church. And that, you know, it just, God, I release them. God, I release them. And God, I release them. And I think it was just, some of that was just hard stuff, recognizing this isn't, and I had to really deflect the, you failure, yes. you did it wrong, yes. why you should have done yes. this better, and yes. you failed them. And probably, yeah, to all of those things, but I can't take, I can, I've learned you can take responsibility without owning it. Yeah. And I think there's a big difference between right. that. So. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I definitely um, had that feeling of betrayal. I think um, you, you pour in your, your heart and soul. Like, I'm a big feeler. So when I'm in a conversation with somebody, I'm in it. And um, when you navigate people making a decision, it really affects your heart. And I know we say it in all the circles about leading yourself well, but it's really hard yeah. when your feelings are involved and then there's a separation of relationship. And because you work really hard in your church, um, there was this illustration that came to me about calluses are really okay on your hands, but they're not okay on your heart. Wow. Wow. And so um, before God, you just had to keep that tender, soft heart 
and look for understanding, but yet the mystery of God is so much bigger. And so you, you do, you navigate it personally, but yet you, you ultimately, like Monica said, you have to cast that care and give it to God. Um, but it is hard because you care a lot. Yeah, absolutely. City's Church has been doing a lot. Pastor Ben and Sarah have big vision yep. for S Saskatchewan and beyond. And so even like during this season, it's like this continuous, this forward motion. But how have you been navigating that as a, like being on staff, um, like feeling like, uh, I, I feel like sometimes um, for me as like senior leader, I'm like, well, we just run hard. And so I just expect everybody to run hard with us. But then I think that like, is it, is everybody dying behind our backs? <laughs> like, is everybody actually okay? And like, how, how have you guys navigated the, the team dynamic, you know, like your, your staff team and like, and because you actually rely on a lot of volunteer team yeah. um, to like keep, continue to move the mission forward. And so how are you guys, like, how are you feeling with like buy-in and where people's heads are at? And I think that like even across our country, we've seen different um, um, d different levels of engagement. Like like um, people are like slower in certain areas; they're more hesitant in certain areas. I don't know if it's a prairie thing that we just like pull up our socks and we just keep going, or like what? How do you guys feel like even the church in in your area? How do they respond to like big vision? We're keeping going. We're going to move forward in this. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting because we are in a small, small city with a big vision. Yeah. Like our vision is for Canada. Um, the commission that God has given our church is to plant 100 churches wow. in 100 cities that will each reach 1,000 people by the year 2030. Yeah. And so God gave us that vision uh, in 2019 when we were still, we had just been a church for two years at that point when God gave Pastor Ben this vision and our pastor is incredible. I've never met a visionary quite like him, uh, but even with the vision and heart, he's just a man who loves the Lord. And so that's how I think our team has really come together is that with the vision, with everything else, we try not to just do church. We try to make sure that we, we bring people back to, do you love Jesus? Because if you don't love Jesus, you're not gonna last. Yes. There will come a time where it's too much, you can't handle it anymore. And so what actually happened during COVID that really helped our church is God gives us a word uh, for our church every year. And the year 2020, we had the word, it was our year of foundation. Mm -hmm. And so God had given us the seven disciplines of our movement that would help us. And it was prayer and fasting, praise and worship, the word, um, and so when COVID happened, it really was, okay, it's foundation building time. And so we had specific things where we could direct people back to. It's like, oh man, this vision is too big. I can't handle it. Like, you know what? You need to spend some time with the Lord and see if, are you really aligned here? We want to make sure that you fulfill God's purpose and plan for your life. And if it's not here, we want to make sure that you're where that's going to be. Um, and so... Yeah, God has just really blessed us so much with a team that is desperate for Jesus yeah. and loves Jesus and wants to do what Jesus wants us to do. And of course, it comes with his challenges. Uh, I think someone said in our conference, if you have more than one person, you have to fight for unity. Yeah. And so uh, we've just always gone back to, all right, we need to go back to the place of prayer and fasting, uh, praising and worshiping together, and then doing things like this together. When we go to other conferences, we step outside of our small town mentality or small city where it's just about us and we go out and we're like okay team let's go see what other people are doing yeah. around our nation to see that it's not just about us this is not a vision for city's church it's a vision for our nation yeah, yeah. I so I love that and we've been talking even now that like kind of travel is starting to open up again and people can go places talking really about I would encourage uh, any church here go send your teams to other churches yeah. Let them go see something else, see it in a different context. See like, and, and if you can't physically be there on a Sunday because you can't like, let's get on a call. Let's figure, hey, how do you do kids check-in? Like I felt like we were back at the beginning again, but I was like, 
Like we had a cap on all of you and now we don't have a room, like we don't have enough space. Like how am I, now we're like, you know, like parking lots fuller. Like we don't have, like it's, we were running into logistical issues. We got a building during COVID. And so, so much of um, the usage of it was like with less capacity. And then all of a sudden when you can be full capacity, you're running into all these problems. And I feel like we're back at square one. Like with like the, even just the logistics side of things, but it's refreshing to be around that like, well, that's why our conference is so key. To be like, ah, other people are doing this. They're, they're winning in this. And Chantal, I wanted to, you talked about your kids, which I just love that your kids are in it. And I, we always say that we want our kids to love Jesus, love the church, and love that their um, parents were pastors. And we're, we're first generation pastors, and um, when I was growing up, PKs had a bad rap. Yep. And so uh, I was like, we're just going to try to do this better than I, <laughs> I saw it as uh, growing up. But I, but like, that is so important to me that you are like bringing your family on for the ride. Um, you and Andrew are both dynamic personalities. Um, and so give us a glimpse into this, I feel like there's the strong personalities in the house. There's like, your kids were homeschooling online for a really long time. And, and you're like, now they're good, they're thriving. How? What did you do? And, and how, how do you continue to do life and ministry, marriage, kids with, with your family? Yeah, like, you know, Andrew and I are, um love heated fellowship just <laughs> just love it um you know you know I'm not I would say strong personality but I just don't um I go kicking and screaming each time like I'm, I do not feel like as women are um we should be ever muted yeah yes um always res- still respectful to my husband but I will say how I'm really feeling about things Good. which brings some of the tension but um we were also fortunate that we have a building and I brought my kids every day to the church building Yeah, yeah. because I couldn't survive the basement for two, after when things were um, a little bit more opening. So each of my kids had their own office, <laughs> <laughs> but I still had my JK beside me with our computers yeah, yeah. Um, every day. I think what was crucial, um, what was stressful, I brought my kids to church. I brought them home. I was with them 24 hours a day, yeah, yeah. seven days a week. And at that time, my parents were very strict. My mom would just come to the driveway. She wouldn't even, like, she'll talk out the window. That's, they were very, so it was very isolating, and which was hard for me, because yeah. my husband and I lived for 14 years in the US. We came back to Canada, planned the church. I'm like, I came to the same city and I can't even see my own family. Right, right. I felt so isolated yeah. in that period. But something Andrew and I really, um, we really, it's very important to us is keeping a family rhythm. And our family rhythm for Saturday is dad makes pancakes every Saturday. Yeah. That's his one trick pony every Saturday. And we do family worship with our kids every Saturday morning since they were like literally six weeks old. Like it's, it's been something we've been consistently doing with our kids. And I think that helped my kids re- normalize life, even though the world was chaotic. And we talked a lot, what's going on? How are you really feeling? How do you feel? And I found out one of my sons, the teacher was even showing his face on online every day. So that was the whole thing. He was isolated, not, the kids were not turning on their camera. The teacher wasn't turning on his camera. So I had to deal with that. But I think the table was our like sacred place for our kids. We talked about everything, the emo- and we allowed them to cry. And it was okay, especially my sons, my older ones, it's okay to be a boy and cry. We gave them, we gave them the permission. We wanted to create a safe place. And we also cried with our kids in front of them. We were vulnerable, like, this is hard for us too. And I think that's where I think um, in this season, you know, um, I share this kind of online, I know my personal business, but literally a month before the pandemic, we went through a personal pandemic in our own marriage. And I think God exposed that so we could be ready for a global pandemic. If we did not go through that hardship, it was like underlining 13 years of things are just brewing. It's like, it's like little things that are just haven't been cleared up yet. And it blew up in our face. We're supposed to go on a couple's vacation, yay, and it blew up. But it blew up in front of trusted people, which was really good that we were able to, and that was our breakthrough. 2020 was our breakthrough year for us. 
And through that, we've been so strong through the pandemic, through just having our breakthrough and our kids. And I think was the biggest thing I think for us was being very honest along the way. It was okay to cry. It was okay to be upset when people were leaving the church and we helped you with everything. You know, you just want to ring, do the list to your head. Like, I <laughs> yeah. did that and I did that. I moved you. I was there when yeah. you had your baby. <laughs> and just, and I think the biggest part to learn through all this too is like, allow people to be them and give them grace. And I think that was the biggest part because I had a friend stop talking to me and unfriended me because I didn't, I was in a city for that same vacation that my life blew up that I didn't call her to visit her. And she was so upset and I was like, you have no idea what I'm going through, let alone a pandemic through a church. And I realized that at the moment I need to extend grace as well to other people because I don't know what's going on even though they've left our church, I really don't know what's going on in their real life. And so I think that's kind of how we navigated the last two years is having some open, honest, and respectful conversations, and even with our children. Yeah. Um, Nancy, Mike is a kind of a traveler. Like, he does a lot of traveling. And I felt like, like, I would say he might even travel more than Jonathan in, like, normal year. But I was like... (laughs) you're not going anywhere anytime soon. Like, we were just like, oh, we're all together all the time. And, um, like, and you were in the East Coast, which I, I like, my family is from Newfoundland, and so, like, I was, my heart was for you guys so much. So I was like, man, if I was there, I would be swimming um, onto the mainland. I know that Nova Scotia is not an island. It kind of is. No, peninsula. Whatever. Okay. I do know my matter. maritimes. You were, f- you were, and you had really hardcore rules. Like, no, you're not allowed out of here. Yeah. So we not only were under the government regulations, our venue had their own stipulations. So all of a sudden the, the law would change and go, yeah, you're allowed to wear a mask. You don't have to wear a mask. And then the venue was like, no, no, but our board wants you to wear a mask. Yeah. Like, you want to talk about dance for the king? Wow. Um, but you know what? We, we said to one another, who are we going to be when this is over? Yeah. Because we're not going to feed our people frustration. Yes. We're not going to feed our people fighting. Yes. We are going to do the best we can to have the right heart. Yeah. Um, but the travel was really tricky because when I watch my husband travel, he comes alive. Right. And it's not the novelty of travel, you guys. It's, it's the relationships like in this room. Yes. It is the networking and the life-giving camaraderie. And listen, if you have a husband and he can eyeball somebody who gets him and can hug him, you let him go. Yes. You let him and go and do that. But for us, it felt like we were in a little bit of an echo chamber. And you've maybe heard that term through... Um, there was a documentary, but in any case, like that echo chamber of being on the East Coast and everything just, we went online and we were in this little tiny office behind a camera and it just felt like, my gosh, we need people. We need some people. Um, And coming here is so healthy and helpful to get out of that echo chamber and get the other voices that you need in this ministry. Right, and so your kids... Oh, the kids. Like, yeah. they're amazing. Yeah. And how, how have you navigated them? Like, they were like, they were high school age kids who were like, I mean, we had to have conversations, constant conversations and discussions because they are two complete different personalities. And so one is super social and that has its challenges because of a pandemic. Um, she was high needs. And I felt that pull because I was going off to the office. And so just a little background story, like I didn't do this all my life. I provided childcare for families. And so I was always at home. But now during the pandemic, my children are home in a season that I'm going out the door and leaving them. And um, knowing that she was lonely and navigating not having friends was really different. Um, That pulled on me. That pulled a lot. And Josh, my 18-year-old, he's super quiet. So I don't know what's harder when you have to pull out of your children or if you're pushing them. Um, So it was a lot of hard work mentally. Um, But I'm really so very grateful for the mercy of God because they did well. 
um, and they were so happy when they could get back to school and have all those elements. And you guys, even with our church, because we were under such high re um, restrictions, they couldn't come. We couldn't run kids ministry and, or youth. So I went off to church on a Sunday with my prized possession and priority left at home in front of a camera, wow. in front of the TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I, I just needed God's grace. I needed his grace in that season, and he's so faithful. He's so faithful and good. Um, he cares for things that you, that you carry. Yes. Know that. He, he cares. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think this is all really good, and I know that we all have our stories, and I think there's, like, there's been probably periods of grieving. There's probably still some Absolutely. to come. I feel like it's waves. You kind of get that, like, remember that or you have that moment and you think about that person or the incident and there's that that grieving there um but also this um desire to continue to move forward is so prevalent and necessary what would you say has sustained you because like the theme of the conference we're here now yeah. like thank god. thank god and um i'm an enneagram six so i just think that everything's going to fall apart like tomorrow and like <laughs> I feel like I, I say so, I'm a surrendered six and so that I said that let go of all my anxieties and fears and conspiracy theories I try to let it go <laughs> and I try not to vocalize it at the dinner table Chantel your dinner table sounds a lot better than my dinner table was <laughs> there are things that my kids are not allowed to repeat that I said at the dinner yes. table. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, but um, Faith, what, sus what sustains you? What are you like? What are the habits that you have in your life now, moving forward, commitments that you've made to yourself that you're like, this is sustaining me and this is how I'm, I, I, I continue to move forward? Yeah. Um, again, certified PK over here. So I moved to Canada when I was 17 um, for university. And one thing that as a, and just for you, like moms, I'm gonna be a mom one day, believing uh, that God's gonna do that for us. Um, yes. And um, for you moms who are pastors, my mom being a pastor changed my life. Yeah. And I tell her that very often. A few days before I got ordained, I just had this, I had to park the car because I was just bawling. And I called my mom and I told her, Mom, you gave me the best inheritance that I could ever have. No money, no, nothing in the world could compare to what you've given me and what I get to pass on now. So I just want to encourage you moms with that, moms in the room who are in ministry, that your, your labor is not in vain. Yes. The seed that you have planted, First Peter tells us, will never be destroyed. Okay. And so because of my mom, she was the person who would wake me up um, at midnight to pray. And I was like, why are we praying at midnight? Are there no demons to, to deal with at 8 p.m.? <laughs> why does it have to be midnight? And then, so we would pray for an hour at midnight. I'm like, thank God I can finally go to sleep. And then at 6.30 a.m., there was someone going around the house with a bell, waking everyone to join us downstairs for morning devotions. I'm like, do, do y'all not know I was up at midnight <laughs> praying with my mom? But here's the beauty of that. Because when I moved out here on my own, for some reason I would just wake up at 6.30 to read my Bible and, and pray. And I don't think I really had my own relationship with God. I was just doing what I was, like the habits I had gained from my mom. Um, and so when we, we, in the year 2020, when God gave us the word that it was our year of foundation, and we were practicing these disciplines of prayer and fasting and praise and worship and engaging with the word, those are, that's what sustains me. Yes. Uh, John 15, abiding with Jesus because I know that apart from him, I can do nothing. And so in the moments where people are leaving and it's frustrating and you feel like you're failing, you feel like you're missing people. Oh, there was that new person at church and I didn't even get to say hello. So now they think we're a crappy church because their pastor didn't say hello to them. Right. Um, I just have to go back into the presence of Jesus and say, Jesus, apart from you, yes. I can do nothing. Yes. And so that's what sustains me is honestly just those regular rhythms. Our church does 
three days of prayer and fasting the beginning of every month. And so it's awesome to get to do that together with our, yeah. our team. Um, and then just doing that personally for ourselves to just make sure that we're abiding with Jesus. Okay. Very good. Very good. It's very good. Monica? Habits, practices. Oh, you know, I think being a Christian for a long time, like you said, I was a PK as well. So you develop, you develop habits, like you just do things. And, and, but I think what changed over the last, like with COVID, it was adding a different dimension of faith to the spiritual, a lot of the spiritual practices that I had already had to a level. And I think, I think adding an intention of faith, like this is why I'm doing this. It just kind of took things to a new level. One of them, what I've always done morning devotions, but I, the whole, I just tweaking it with, it became scripture before phone that I became really very rigid with myself because I would be very much like you in the worst case scenario and thinking, I was just like, oh, I could easily get worked up about things if I'd see it in an email or online or news or anything like that. So I became, it's like, and there were times where one time I did it, I check a message and it's just like, Dang it, I shouldn't have looked because now I'm really upset. And so I became really ruthless with myself. Another one was a gratitude journal. Um, and physically writing down, I got a five year, like a little diary and it's just five lines, you know, and it turned it into like five gratitudes a day. And I really needed to do that because I was in such a negative bent to the point where I was so frustrated and there were some days where it's just like, I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for my family. Like really vague. Like it was bad. It's just like, I'm thankful I got up this morning. Like really. But what's been cool is now going into the second year, seeing some of those things. And so it's been faith building, but that really helped. And I honestly, I could feel within two months, something changed in my perspective. And, and a third thing, which this sounds so weird and religious, but it did something. This thing, I think it was, like, it was another game changer and it broke. And it was starting my morning on my knees with a quick prayer. And it was just, Holy Spirit, come and restore my union with you. And I, fiz and I, you know, I mean, I grew up in Catholic church for a lot of the early years of my life. So it's up and down, up and down, kneel, kneel, kneel you know, yeah. kneel said. And I was like, oh, the kneeling is stupid. But, but getting down, and it, what it did is part of the prayer was, Jesus, I, as I'm lowering myself. Would you help me to see you as exalted above everything else? Yeah. And it was about two months of doing that and something broke. Like I literally could feel faith starting to grow in me. Yeah. So that really was a game. Something crazy yeah. as simple as that. Yeah. I just want to share a little prayer that I would pray the whole time, and it's from Psalms 131. I wanted to, I know it in the NIV, but the uh, Passion Translation is yeah. so much better. Psalms 131, Lord, my heart is meek before you. I don't consider myself better than others. Like, we're not going to play God, you guys. We're not going to do that. I'm content to pursue matters that are not over, oh, sorry, let me say it again. I'm content to not pursue matters that are over my head. Right. There are things that are above your pay grade, yeah, yes. such as your complex mysteries and wonders that I'm not ready to understand yet. I am humbled and I'm quieted in your presence. Well, yeah. Being quieted is a very special place that your heart can really minister, right. that your heart gets ministered to from God. Um, it's a great place as leaders and um, shepherds and pastors' hearts to lead from. And that has sustained me in going, I, don't, I can lead with my ears and follow up with my tongue if I need to, wow, like James 1.19 says. Um, and then on a practical note, you guys, like I started running which I'm super proud of myself That's because really I went awesome. through, yeah, I went through a bunch of surgeries um, that really changed my body, and it was really hard to get back to a place where it felt healthy. And uh, I don't run near as much as Pastor Jonathan. I think he does like 10K every day, wow. every day. Wow. But uh, last year I ran a thousand K. Yeah, game changer, game changer in your brain. I think, you know, um, more practical, not as spiritual. Um, when I was feeling anxiety rising or feeling in a hold, I text somebody. Mm. You know, at my church, we say, don't do life alone. I try to practice that in the yeah. last two years yeah. when I felt like, you know what? And when someone texts me, I would be honest. 
You know, Aaron would text me, Emma would text me, yeah. Natasha would text me. It's like, you know what? It's a hard time right now. Yeah. And I, I challenge myself because it's easy to be, don't tell people your business. You're, yeah. you're the leader. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I challenge myself is to be honest. And yeah. when I felt the anxiety rising, text somebody immediately yeah. so you don't get all overthinking in your head, creating this great movie drama, and it never <laughs> happened. And so... I think that really helped me in yeah. the last uh, two years was I, I, I didn't let get it too far, immediately text somebody. And then the other thing is a cup of tea. Oh. <laughs> you know, a cup of tea because if it was very, it would make it very, very hot that I couldn't slurp it down fast. I would have to pause, I had to pause to drink the cup of tea. Yeah. And that really, really helped me in the morning, mornings to just like, pause for that moment and I had I just knew when I had the last sip it was like life was gonna happen again real life so I would save that last sip and that really that routine really helped me was texting people when I was in that low spot and a cup of tea yeah so good well and I think relationship is huge I love what you said Nancy that there's just some things above our pay grade and I think I've been reading Job um like 36 and 37 and it's all like it's all about that like who are we to like he does all this. Who are we to think that we have any control over anything? He sends the snow down. He moves the clouds. He decides this. Like, these are, like, it's like, who are we to think that we have any say in any matter? And I think that's been something that's been just talked about a lot here the last couple of days. It's like, hey, let's just keep it simple. Let's, what are the basics here? Like, what do I actually need to know? And at the beginning of 2022, I did um, the 30-day shred for the first time. And I loved it. I loved it. I like, I listened to probably more than I actually, you know what I mean? I listened while the guy talked. And I wish that they could talk faster. I'm like, <laughs> two times fast is still not very fast. That's not like, that's not like women chatter fast. Like, I'm like, I could understand this if you talked faster. Um, but uh, I, I loved it. There was something about, I think that 20, um, 2021, well, 2020, 2021, they were rough I, for me. I, f- I felt like, um, we, well, we were like, get, we got a building. We were, we were in the middle of transition personally with our home. And so we had the six of us in a one bathroom condo. It was so bad. It smelled so bad. It smelled like every time like you had a shower, which like, you know, like when you, it's shower night. Everybody showers, like, one after another. So then all that humidity in the bathroom, it was just nicotine and marijuana coming off the walls when the, the, the steam would go in the room. It was so bad. You just get high in our condo. And I was so grumpy. Like, I was very, very angsty towards the Lord about the season, which was so bad because we were we were like building a home that we like I was so excited about but we were in this waiting season but it wasn't even like I was like I know what I'm waiting for like we put the money down but it's like this is taking forever and I was really and then I I know for sure it got delayed because of my bad attitude and so I had to like really surrender it to the Lord and so 2022 I was like this has got to be different I need and I, there's just something about like washing yourself with the word that's like I don't need to get I don't need to study every single verse here but when you hear like Jesus getting crucified four days in a row because the gospels are back to back to back or you hear like Kings and Chronicles and Samuel like back to back to back and there are all these stories that are the same but different uh it's a lot for the soul but it did something for me this year that I felt like was exactly what I needed it was like I need to get out this angst and 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 focus it where it needs to go in order to lead my family and lead my church and I think I love what you said about keeping your heart soft that uh, Helen Burns in 2016 said that to us we went through some crazy stuff uh lots of people left the church all of our stuff got stolen, found on fire in a field. They burnt all of our stuff, like all of our cases and trailers, whoever they are. <laughs> I might have my ideas of who they were. <laughs> no, only the Lord knows. Um, but she said that, to, she said, keep your heart soft. And I don't think there's anybody, and Pastor Helen's not here today. She flew to another event. I don't think there's anybody who does that better. Yeah. Yeah. 
I always see her liking everybody's posts and making a comment on everybody's cel- and celebrating everything for every. And I, I just take that. And I'm like, I know you blocked me, or I know you've yes. unfollowed me, yes. but I still follow you. Yes. And so I'm going to say, congratulations on your brand new baby. I'm so yes. excited. Yes. And it's not, it's just for me to keep my heart soft. And even like within this last month, I kid you not, a couple months ago, uh, uh, yeah, some stuff, whatever, doesn't matter. The people walked through the door of our church again, and I was able to, with purity of heart, be genuinely happy that they were back in the building with no bitterness against them. And it, because I've been like, hey, I did not stop loving you. And, 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 and that's only because of the Lord. That's not me. That's not my strength. And uh, I only love you because God is helping me. Uh, okay, we got to wrap this up. But hasn't this been amazing? These four women are quality. And I know that there's even more out here. And could we just stand for a minute? We're going to just like... Um, in March, like I said, we kind of did some uh, small, like a, a, a preliminary run on what could we do for small groups. We, we're the association of related churches. So we need to be relational. And um, women, I should tell you said it, I, you, you text kind of when you don't feel like you want to. And I never feel like I want to. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to go like this and sulk and have a bath, not a cold bath. And, uh, but we, need, we do need each other, and it's not just cliche. You need somebody in your corner, and it, it, that's kind of like a, that's not expecting anything from you. That you can just be like, hey, can you pray? I don't need to know any details. Uh, you've got to have those people that are like ready to slash some tires with you, uh, to kind of like go, go to war with you a little bit, who are in the same world as you're in and who get it. And so be intentional today. Find those people, find those women. But also the ARC booth is out there. And if it, it, I'm not quite sure if you've got information on this, but you can also just email info at arcchurches.ca in the fall when these launch. When we've got women's groups launching, sign up, make it happen. When there's a meetup in your area, show up. Uh, it's, it's so important, and uh, it has is, it is really changed. We, we've, we've been in, a, we're like Alberta, uh, so like this is the only place I've been able to travel for a really long time, so I just keep seeing Monica everywhere. We're, Red Deer is our favorite place to vacation. Gasoline Alley, we stay at the Holiday Inn. My kids love the pool, and that's where we hung out, like, all the pandemic. Um, but if not for friends that we keep seeing and checking in on, I, I honestly don't know where I'd be. So, um, Nancy, could you pray for us? Could you touch a woman around you? Just put your hand on her. Oh my God. Lord, I thank you so much for these moments. I know that all heaven stands at attention when, when they see this unity and the power that goes forth in these conferences. Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. You're so good to us. You've given us everything, all the power that we need. And God, I pray for the hearts of this room to reach out to you. And God, I pray that they would reach out to each other Father, I pray that they wouldn't believe the lies, that, uh, that the kingdom of God is not righteousness, peace, and joy, because that's what you tell us this is. This community can bring us such healing. Father, you're so good. You don't withhold anything good. And so I just bless these women, God, in every avenue that they walk in, and every part that they walk in and they show up in. Father, I pray for your power over their lives. Father, I pray that they'd be confident in Christ, that they would have authority. God, make a difference with our lives. God, we sign up. We sign up broken. We sign up ready. And Father, we believe you're going to go ahead of us. Amen? Amen.